Hey everyone, Mike McCutcheon. So today what we're gonna do is we're going to one of my favorite forensic stores. Uh, we have a couple classes coming up and so we're gonna go buy some supplies. So let's head inside and we'll see what we can buy. So one of the things I like, we're gonna use a lot of gloves. Uh, so these are on sale. These are only six bucks for a box of a hundred. So we're gonna get, oops. I'm gonna get a bunch of these boxes. Those, we'll even grab a medium. And some XL. Nice. All right, so let's see here. We got lots of lights. So this light here, uh, it's a nice long light. These are actually really good for foot impressions. So I'm gonna get one of those. Some good flashlights. Um, all right, let's see what else we got. We got super glue. You just want to make sure that it has the cyanoacrylate in it. So I usually clean them out of super glue. Um, it's got masks uh, when we're doing our fingerprinting. You want to wear a mask. So these are going to be uh, these are five for 99 cents. We got a deal on them today. So we'll clean them out of those as well. Let's see what else we got. Now here's the cool thing. So if you look at these, um, if you want to practice with your blood stain and blood spatter, I like to use these mini picks and hooks to have the blood drip off the end of it so you can see the difference of uh, the droplet size depending on the tool that the blood drips from. And these are cheap. They're, they're only two bucks, but it gives you a couple of different tools so you could practice that. So I like that. I got a set of pliers, different kind of pliers, so we could do our impression evidence and use our um, Silmark or Accutrans to, to get the impression evidence. So we got all kinds of good stuff in here. Safety goggles, um, all kinds of good stuff that we have. And this is just in the, uh, the, the bargain area. Oh, look at this stuff. So this is great. So on the last video, um, I showed you, a, a, I used my tackle box to make my own fingerprint kit. If you're on a budget and you're trying to make your fingerprint kit and um, you could use any of this stuff. So I wouldn't use the ammo cans. You could use this stuff for maybe packing all of your different powders or some of things like that. But I would go with more of a, uh, something like this. I mean, this thing is giant, but it's got all the compartments in it. Um, you can even have one inside, uh, different sizes. So this stuff, uh, you can get pretty cheap. You can pack it. You're gonna wanna put some type of foam in here for uh, so your things aren't crashing around. But you could create your own go kit. Uh, or like this one here. This one's only nine bucks, uh, and you could get your stuff in the top. You could put all of your uh, there we go. You could put all of your um, super glue and stuff up top on the inside. Now, what you could do with this is you could actually use this as your fuming chamber. So I've done that. I load my things in here, and then when I want to fume stuff on the scene, I'll actually use this as my fuming chamber, and then I also use it. To carry my stuff around so it works really really well I'm gonna get one of these I'm getting one of these so we got a, a bunch of things over here that are really great um, these are all of our measuring tools so for uh, blood spatter we have different calipers you have your digital caliper and then you have the, uh, the manual caliper they're in metric uh, but these are only uh, two bucks. You can get a, a digital one for measuring your blood stain size. They're ten bucks. We also have for um, when we're doing our um, uh, bullet trajectory, and you need to do your angle finders. So we have a digital angle angle finder. 
and then you have the um, the dial gauge angle finder and these are inexpensive the digital one is about 35 bucks but you can get a very very detailed angle by using a five dollar angle finder um, I'm gonna get an extra one of those we have lots of if I can get this off lots of different ropes that you could use if you're not using lasers and you're, you're still doing the blood stain or bullet trajectory using the string they got all kinds of string here um, different colors and different rolls this stuff's nice because it's thin enough but it's really strong um, and it'll you can pull it pretty tight and it's not gonna uh, sag on you all kinds of tape measures we're gonna use this one when we're doing our um, uh, our sketches and we need to map out where our evidence is and do our measurements so I like to buy a lot of tape measures when we're in class I have boxes full of tape measures can't have enough and I have coupons so I'm gonna buy a couple more tape measures Oh, one thing I did forget is when we are, if you're going to use the baseline method to map out your evidence, you're going to want to get either a 100 foot or they have a 300 foot tape measure. Um, one thing that you, you want to make sure is that the tape measure, when you're laying it out, it doesn't just have the one foot sections, it actually measures the continuous inches. So you don't just want one foot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 2 feet, 1, 2, 3, 4. You want it to have continuous inches. Otherwise, when you're, uh, you know, 98 inches out, it's not going to uh, read properly. You want to make sure that it's going to just continue to count in inches as well. But uh, this one is in metric. They also have it in inches, depending on which one that you want. Um, some of them have both just depends what one you get but they're cheap enough and you absolutely need this if you're gonna do baseline you absolutely need at least a hundred feet at least a hundred feet another thing we have here and I'm gonna get one of these today but having the proper tools is uh, very important and here's just a metal detector they're 50 bucks but if you are looking for a shell casing uh, even in, in short grass you could spend all day looking for a shell casing. You have a metal detector, you're gonna pick up that stuff really fast. It's really important to have the right tools, otherwise you're just gonna spend your time out there um, looking for stuff and you, literally you could spend days. Do this as an exercise, take a shell casing, throw it out into the grass. You could even tell someone about where it is and have them go look for it and see if they can find that shell casing. Then bring a metal detector out there. They're going to find it in two seconds. So if you don't have a metal detector, um, it's not something you're going to keep in your kit, but certainly something you should have available to you. And they have those here. Um, they have all kinds of knives and things like that. That would be more for uh, our training when uh, trying to get fingerprints off of different items like we had with the hammers and things like that. So I like to use the, the weapons for uh, training. All right, so over here, we got all kinds of stuff. We got our uh, dust particle masks. I showed you those earlier, but they also have some N95 masks with a respirator in them. Um, so these are more expensive because they, they do have the respirator in them. But you can get all your safety equipment. They got the full cover safety goggles, yellow safety goggles. Um, you can actually use these yellow goggles as a filter when we're using our yellow filter. Uh, I don't normally do that. I will still use, usually use the clear ones and then use my other uh, goggles because I can make sure that they're tinted properly when we're using our forensic light sources. But these will work in a pinch and they're only two bucks and I think they're on sale today for like a dollar. So we can get some of those. Um, if you wanted to get the, the full masks, they do have boxes of 50. Um, we use these all the time when we're fingerprinting so you could certainly use those. Uh, they do have full face shields, so if you were, um, say, cutting a stain out of a wall and you wanted to take a whole piece of the wall, you would want the, the face mask. Or if you're using a lot of uh, blood evidence and whatnot, you could get a face mask. That would be easy enough. This is always a fun area. We have all the different weapons we can use for just for scenes if we want to do mock crime scenes or practice lifting fingerprints off of unique items or hammers. 
little tiny ones. Um, I like these to try to get fingerprints off of the little parts of it. Um, and these are cheap, they're only a few dollars, so if you're setting up like a mock crime scene for a classroom or something like that, you can get these and uh, make some pretty good marks on your um, uh, different items in your scene. I like to put blood on them and do some blood spatter, some things like that. So this is a good area. So we spent 80 bucks. I got more, uh, more stuff than I need. This is for a whole class. I got boxes of gloves, five tape measures, five glasses, a whole um, tackle box. Uh, this thing's packed, free flashlight, all this kind of stuff. You don't need to spend a tremendous amount of money to have a, uh, a good kit. You just have to be creative um, and find some things that will work great. And that's both for training and for the actual stuff that you're going to use out on the scene.